So I was talking to my mom the other day, and she says I'm incredibly handsome. I think if your mother doesn't think you're handsome, then you're pretty screwed. Yeah, if they don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. If women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Yes, uh, Red <laughs> Green always said. And the question I wanted to answer today is how and why are we single in Taiwan? Are you asking how as in, oh my goodness, I can't believe it? I mean, my mom really said I'm super <laughs> handsome. Would you say it's a choice or a situation that we find ourselves in? Uh, unwillingly. Yeah, I think that's a good point. It's not, I, I, I do, I think we should preface this by saying we're not single by like virtue. While living in Taiwan, I think for the first four years, I was in a relationship. Yep. Uh, different ones. I had like two, maybe three serious relationships in the four years I was here. Wow. I know, I know, I know. The reason I ask is because I think that a lot of people assume that foreigners in Taiwan are constantly in relationships or dabbling in the, uh, you know, dating world. Not that I necessarily agree with that, but I, I think it is a it's stereotype. It's a very common stereotype and one that is is valid for some people and there are some foreigners here that are married and in like very stable, solid relationships. So it's it applies to a certain type of foreigner. Are you single because you hate Taiwanese girls and dating internationally? No, let's put that on a record that it's nothing about that. I would say that I'm single for a multitude of reasons and it's not that I don't enjoy the company of girls and hanging out and spending time with them but one of the major reasons that I choose to be single is that I'm just too busy but not just because I don't have the time to invest in nurturing a relationship but also I don't want the burden of my job to fall on someone else's shoulders that I maybe I'm just getting to know or just getting to trust so for example um, my situation is different to yours I'm married divorced failed marriage with a son that I have to support and I have to send a lot of money home to South Africa to pay for his education and accommodation and stuff. I don't want to have to have somebody in a relationship that feels resentment or resentful towards me having to spend a majority of my money on a kid and a family that's got nothing to do with her. Which I think that a lot of girls in Taiwan are considerate of when it comes to having a serious relationship and having to introduce me to their family. And their family, if I get close to their family after a few months, meet the parents, and like, I'm like, oh yeah, I've got, a, I've got a son back in South Africa. And they're like, well, what are you doing with my daughter? Like, it, I, don't, I think that's one of the problems culturally that, we would, that I would face if I, if I had a girlfriend. I, I do think though, if you were dating someone who was resentful for the fact that you had to send money to your son, you should be dating her. She's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's definitely popped up a few times where I've been dating someone and they will, they'll maybe find out the, the amount of money that I send home or the amount of money that it costs for a school uniform for William or shoes and something and they'll be like that, that money that could be put into a pool of s building a life together with someone else. Yeah, I too am very poor, uh, which is a <laughs> big reason I'm single. But I think that for me, it's much the same reason I'm too busy. And I was in, you know, relationships and stuff for the first four years in Taiwan. And I, I just felt like I was drowning a bit, you know, working a full time teaching job and also trying to be a YouTuber and just never having a second to like breathe or have a moment to myself. And I always have a lot of respect or I'm always in awe of parents who literally don't get that ever, you know, because they, they work all day and they go home to their kids and it's like there's no them time. Yeah, but that's not that's parenting. That's a little bit different to dating. Sure. But I mean, it's still it's the same thing where like I, I need my time to myself which is a problem when you're with someone. Like I would get home from work, you know, a girlfriend would want to like watch a movie with me or watch TV with me or have dinner with me or do other things that couples do, but I can't, I got to go work on my YouTube stuff. And when I'm finished that, I need time by myself. I need to like play a video game or go hang out with my friends or go ride my motorcycle or go, go do the things that I like to do. And did you ever try telling them, I just want to be by myself? It's very difficult to do though. Okay. So how did that work out? How, well, because there's always this work? assumption that it's them, you know, it's like, well, what, what did I do? Or you don't love me anymore. Or this, 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 and that. And then, that opens up arguments and arguments in a cross-cultural relationship are a lot more difficult to deal with than someone from your own culture. Not only the language, that's an obvious one. No, but arguments it, are the easiest thing in the world because we yeah, always win. I know, I'm making an obvious point here, but like, but, but the less obvious thing is the cultural differences that exist, even if the person you're with speaks the same language as you, even if they speak it really well. There's like feelings and meanings and... Gravit gravitas to each word. Yeah, that, that exists when, you, when you're talking to someone from the same culture, it kind of come, becomes a bit lost. You're speaking the same words, but the feelings are a little bit different there and it makes it a bit more difficult to deal with. And I just felt like I was kind of just keeping my head like barely above water. And now that I've been single for a year, it feels a lot nicer to be able to like get my work done and doing the stuff that I like to do, like leisure time, like splitting it in between. Because I find it very difficult to 
enjoy leisure time with other people. Yeah. Like I really like spending time with myself to the point where like I was just playing a video game by myself. All my work was done, my apartment was clean, ordered some food, I, it was like the best. Like mm -hmm. I was just so relaxed and I hadn't felt that way in, like since I was like 19. <laughs> it was so great and I was like if someone else was here it would ruin my whole afternoon. But that should, you should be able to do that with somebody that you love. You should be able to tell them I need some me time, I need to, to play a video game and have a pizza to myself and they should should understand it. That's the perfect relationship, right? Where you either, when you're together, you're doing something that you both exactly want to do, or you're separate and you're both doing independent things that you understand each other need and want. Finding that is difficult, that's the point. And if you find somebody that you want to spend too much time away from, it's not the right person. If you find somebody that you feel is too needy and clingy, it's not the right person. So this is why it takes so long, especially in Taiwan, as the, the, the cultural makes it more difficult, is to find that perfect blend of needs, wants, like together and, and, and separate, in my opinion, as the perfect uh, expert on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also think another element is the fact that my life is changing very quickly. So like I'm leaving my full-time teaching job to try and do YouTube full-time. I just bought a motorcycle. Life is getting more expensive and the amount of money I'm about to make is about to drop drastically. And so it, life is very delicate right now. Yeah, so get and, a girlfriend, live together, yeah, share yeah, yeah. your money. <laughs> and I feel like when you fall in love with someone or allow yourself to fall in love with someone, you kind of have to render yourself vulnerable. Oh, yeah. You know, and I'm already incredibly vulnerable with my financial situation and just my lifestyle that's about to change. And so to risk a woman coming in here and fucking this all up for me <laughs> is, is too damn high. And so I'm sort of trying to be single because I also think that, you know, a little bit like your situation with your son, it's unfair to like bring someone in. Because I, I wanted to make a lot of changes. You know, I was with a, I was in a relationship for like three years with my last girlfriend who, who you've met and, you know, we all, all my friends like her and, and she's great. But I really wanted to stop drinking. I wanted to take you two more seriously. I wanted to kind of be a little bit more of my own man and I felt like I couldn't do that while I was in a relationship for whatever reason. I just felt like I was a bit of an infant in the sense because when you have a, especially when you have a Taiwanese girlfriend, when you have a local girlfriend, it's a lot easier to get things done. You really don't have to take care of yourself very much because oh, they take, done. Yeah. everything is done. A lot of administration stuff, you know, calling, <laughs> well, like, you know what I mean? I don't know how else yeah, to label that. Like call, calling things for like when bills need to get paid yeah, or yeah, when yeah. taxes need to get done or your ARC. and. And there's like a language, it's just too annoying for a foreigner to have to go and do it. Yeah. Like I, I went to the motorcycle dealer last night to talk about insurance. And I was like, I'm fucking, I have no our, our Chinese is not good enough for that. Yeah, yeah, not even close, you know. So it would have been so much easier to have a girlfriend there. But I like the fact that I can take pride in this fact that I can kind of do these things by myself a little bit more. And although that I really liked my last girlfriend and she's great and she didn't do anything wrong. She was perfect. I just felt like I couldn't advance in my life while I was in a relationship, which is a very strange Thing. I don't know if that's, I don't know where to put that. Were you just stable and you were just so comfortable, would you say? Like not challenging yourself or why would you say that you weren't advancing in your life? Because you were building and nurturing a relationship. So surely that's one, one kind of progression in your life. Yeah, I don't know. I think that I needed to see the risk involved there in order to progress. Like I felt like, you know, if I stop drinking, it doesn't matter. I still have everything together. Like nothing really changes. Whereas yeah. I think that when you are drinking quite a lot, like I was, it's scary, the idea of quitting drinking, because you might think that maybe you can't make good videos anymore, you can't think creatively anymore, people won't think you're funny, or people won't like you in social situations anymore because you rely on that so much. And I don't want to focus on alcohol too much, but I think that when you have a girlfriend, none of that really matters because you still have that level of support yeah. and it's always there. So the risk isn't as significant there yeah. anymore. And so I wanted to be single to like really have the weight, the risk there present to really force myself to improve myself. There's two things I want you guys to do in the comments. I want you to tell me what you think about getting into relationships cross-culturally and or just in general. Uh, comment down below your craziest dating stories because I think it would make the comment section so fun and I would actually dedicate a whole video reading them. Like cross-cultural crazy stories in the comment section. Yeah, that would be, be good if we can get some good ones. Hilarious. So do that. We're about to go film a podcast that uh, you and I share. So mm -hmm. I will link that in the description below. Go check it out. It's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, this video is of course sponsored by you. So thank you so much for subscribing, for liking, for commenting your funny dating stories. And uh, go check out Alan's channel. And I'll catch you guys next week for another video. Bye. Bye.